Hello, everyone. I hope you had a very nice weekend Friday. We saw how strong the market was. It gapped up and continued to rally overall. Very, very solid session. The, only, the weakest of all the indexes was the NASDAQ overall because the NASDAQ could not hold or close above where it did open. But still, the gap to new highs, the close at new highs, all in all, uh, very, 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 very strong market. That's why we're back under a buy signal. And I wanted to make mention my time segment volume is nowhere near what I would consider overbought levels. And my MACD, not only is it nowhere near overbought levels, but that m trailing moving average is going to take a long time to catch back up. So this, this is a time where we could get overbought and stay overbought. I have not checked out my slow stochastics yet, but I assume a similar situation is there also. Starting to go towards overbought, but not yet overbought. But what a, that, it's pretty powerful how quickly this has happened. The Russell 2000, the TSV, and MACD starting to get a little overbought. And with this move to, to not new highs in the Russell 2000, but new October and late September highs, I have to start to think that this market, we're going to need to pull back. If you look at this V move straight up after that V move straight down, uh, it's hard to believe that we're just, I mean, look at all, look at the last V move in February, for instance. You know, we V moved to new highs, and then what happened after that? We went nowhere, down, had to rebase, and then started to move back up again. And the Russell 2000 really didn't go anywhere, showing the weakness in the overall market. But there's a lot of good-looking chart patterns out there, so until they go completely ugly and more failures, I'm not going to fight this move to new highs. If anything, consolidation and a breakout to new highs would only make the, the charts that much better. It's a very, very strong looking market. And even in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it just looks really, really bullish. So we'll see how it acts going forth, but I expect backing and filling. Now, I do have some new long positions. They have earnings coming up on three. So let's go over the, the three big ones. Why, why? has earnings coming up on the 7th, 8th, or 11th. I, I can't remember in which order these stocks. Sorry, I'm ill-prepared. I just got back from longboarding and watching football over to friend's house. But anyway, so why would all these have earnings coming up? So they're only going to be 2.5% positions and tight stops. I would definitely have a hard one on the book below the low of the day of today. And then adjusting, you know, in case all hell breaks loose, you have one below the 76.64 level. But why, why overall still, I'm going to want to see it move up. Or else we'll have to think about pairing back going into earnings. Also, TTM, YY, by the way, is in the perfect speculator scan and a cancel quality. TTM, Tata Motors, this is not a perfect speculator scan stock. This is only a cancel quality stock. Once again, one of your stops below the low a day, the other stop below. You can either use these lows here or the Thursday low of 45.12. Either way, though, it's a pretty strong signal off the 50-day moving average. So it would be actually really bearish if all these long signals that we got fail. And then another long signal is in BITA. BITA is a perfect speculator scan stock and a cancel stock. Now I know some people like, but volume, yeah, it's a joke. But it's been a joke all year long, so I'm not going to really pay attention to it just like why, why. Similar situation, volume isn't that big on the retake of the 50. But BIDA looks a little bit stronger than why, why. But once again, earnings are coming up. So a hard stop on the book below the low a day here, and then you can use either that low a day there, or you can use the 77.15 level of 10.30. But once again, we're going to want to see it start moving up or we're going to start cutting losses. And then PSXP, Philip 66. This can actually be a 5 percenter position because it is bouncing right off the 50-day moving average. If we're wrong for about the fir for my first for sure, knowing that I'm wrong, I'm only going to lose about 1%, 2%. And then if I use the low a day here, for instance, 66.36, or even go back to 63.76, I'm still not going to be risk losing that much. But 5% account position, it closes below the low a day, the Friday day, you're out of 2.5%. Maybe then you're out of another half with a close below 66.36, and then you're out of all of it if it closes below 63.76 or moves below it with your hard stops. But that's going to be a 5%er. There's other nice stocks out there that we're watching. I mean, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of good looking chart patterns. I mean, if you look at a stock like Taser, that's a really, really bullish chart pattern. I tell you what, if we get more patterns like that start showing up, it's going to be hard to be, you know, too upset on this market. Then there's stocks like KW that's breaking out, and then MOH. 
bouncing off the 50-day moving average and breaking out. And then there was a couple of stocks that had, like, huge volume and bop surges. But you know, this one, for instance, didn't close higher than where it opened, so it couldn't be a new long signal, but that one's on watch. And then UVV, another bop volume price surge. It's been a while since I've seen these. So there's two in those two stocks there. So if we can continue to see stuff like that, I'm sure that this market should be able to rally higher. But just in case, you know, that's why we have our hard sell stops on the book. The V-shaped move needs to be digested. Another one I was considering going long was Zebra. It's a pre-perfect speculator scan stock, but I believe earnings are on Monday or Tuesday. So it's a no-go. But this will be interesting to see how it moves after earnings following that V-shaped move. All right, everyone. Great luck this week. Aloha.